the usual suspects. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to Silver Screen Showcase. My name is Jared Malone, and I'll be your host as we take you behind the camera and into the minds of some of Santa Barbara County's most talented filmmakers. My guest today is Jack Presnell, president and founder of Community Film Studio Santa Barbara. Right now, we're gonna take a look at a clip from their feature film, The Bet. When we return, we'll sit down with Jack and find out more about his creative process. Are competitive animals. I don't need help. I can do it anytime I want. No. Well, let's see if you can compete. We get to choose the ladies for you. And I'll choose yours. Three choices apiece, three weeks to do it. My money would still be on Gramps. Thank you, son. I was wondering if you ever like to go out. I am out. Yeah. All women need is the opportunity. Was there something you needed? No, I, I just, I saw you here. Well, let me give you a few pointers. Anything I can do to stop you? I have vast knowledge of the fairer sex. Have you ever seen the living quarters call you? That's a lovely offer, but I have to get my car home before sunset. Don't wait forever for the exact right moment to make your move. You're really cute. You should come in. I don't really know anybody. I didn't really come prepared. I don't have my medication. Confidence, that's the name of the game. Hey. Oh, hey. Most important, eye contact. Hi, Jennifer. I just don't know how to fix this. Just tell me what to do. You didn't even think about me. Maybe a traveling companion. Maybe. You have a bet involving women? Addison's not your buddy. He's my son. Mom, it's not that big of a deal. Spin love. Was easy to be with you. Was easy for that guy to walk floating away. I know he how you were getting small and small. I went back on you. All right, and we're back here with our guest Jack Presnell, president and founder of Community Film Studio Santa Barbara. Jack, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. Nice to have. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about Community Film Studio Santa Barbara? Oh, I can probably tell you more than you want to know. Um, the Community Film Studio Santa Barbara is a pioneering effort. It is the world's first and only so far nonprofit, all volunteer, community focused motion picture studio. Our goal was to take a model that has been well crafted over the last century called community theater. There's playhouses all over this country, places where people come together and put on a show to entertain their friends and neighbors. And we wanted to take that same ethos of community and of entertainment and elevate from a play to a movie. And so that's what we created with the Community Film Studio Santa Barbara. Excellent. We do have a lot of great theaters in town. We've got the Marjorie Luke. You know, the new Vic is under construction. That's a great concept to Absolutely. bring the community together through theater, through filmmaking. How did the concept emerge? Well, I've had lots of careers over my life, and one of them was as an independent filmmaker. And it was, it was always the career that was most dear to me, also the most challenging. So I went off into software and did some other things as well to actually pay the bills. Um, but filmmaking's always been a first love. And a couple of years ago, I had uh, the opportunity to be kind of out of commission for a while. And so while I was recovering from some things, um, I had the opportunity to do some research and to see what's current in the world of filmmaking, what's happening today, and what's all this technology about. And as I kind of returned to my filmmaking community, I realized that a lot had changed. And most importantly, I realized that, and, and of course I knew that the digital technology had really you know, kind of taken over in terms of production, 
uh, and post-production. What I didn't realize in, until I started doing my research was how significant the, the sea change was with regard to the distribution component. And that's always been the final hurdle. It's always been possible for somebody to go and make a movie. And there's the statistic I've heard, 45,000 movies made in the world every year. Wow. 45,000. American cinema houses, those movie palaces where we go and sit in the dark and watch movies, need about 115 movies a year. So you do the math. There's a lot of movies getting made that don't find a place to get seen. And so the idea that this digital marketplace is emerging the same way that it did for the music industry and, and largely dismantled the traditional music industry uh, the, with iTunes, the advent of iTunes in particular, now I can go download a song. I don't have to download the whole album. Um, as a musician, I could put my music up on iTunes and be found by somebody. I, I'm in charge of my own destiny. If I convince people to go hear my music, I can tell them where to go get it. I don't have to depend on some gatekeeper in a, in a giant record company who's decided whether I'm worthy for a record deal in their promotional machine and all of that in order to be heard. Well, the same is happening for motion pictures. There are now venues, and they're, it's still in its infancy. It hasn't quite figured out what it's going to be, not the way music has with iTunes and Amazon and Pandora and places like that. It's, it, that's, it's starting to kind of settle in. The movie side is still a little in flux, but certainly Netflix has been a, a profound sea change. Uh, you know, now you can go to Netflix without having cable and see pretty much everything you can see on cable. You just pay a monthly subscription fee to Netflix and download it. Um, and so that's continuing to evolve, this digital marketplace. But what it means is that it would be possible to make a small independent film. And if you are energetic enough and you have the resources behind you, and mostly in terms of elbow grease, uh, to go out and promote that movie on your own and get it into these digital marketplaces without going through the gatekeepers in Hollywood, you might be able to make your money back. Right. And so the problem for many filmmakers is just making your money back is not enough. Um, and that's where the nonprofit idea came from. Is if we, if we, it doesn't mean we don't want to make money. We do, and we can. Nonprofit doesn't mean we can't make money. It just means what do you do with the money that you make. Um, but by taking a lot of the pressure off of the organization to go out and have a blockbuster, uh, you know, we can make a small movie that might not find a giant audience, but if we keep the price contained, then we can find enough of an audience uh, to make that money back and have enough in the bank to keep the organization going and to make the next film. Really coming back to the community theater model. Community theater, when they put on a play in, in Peoria, uh, they're not putting on that play with the intention that people are going to come in from Chicago. They're putting it on for the people in Peoria. And so the same was kind of what we were thinking here also, which was we're making movies in Santa Barbara with Santa Barbarans, uh, primarily for Santa Barbarans. Can we make a film, a good film, and keep the cost down so low that by taking it into the theaters, here in Santa Barbara, we can make most of our money back. And, and, and then sell some DVDs as well. And, and can we make most of our money back that way? And then we can take the movie out into this digital marketplace on this kind of do-it-yourself approach of marketing your movie and, and try to convince the rest of the world to come and watch the movie as well. And because the stakes aren't very high, because we didn't spend very much money to get there, we don't have to hit this colossal home run. We don't have to have a, a $10 million opening weekend the way right. uh, the you know, two, somebody in Hollywood does. The $200 million Jack and the, Jack and the Beanstalk that Disney just really lost a lot of money on. Exactly. So that doesn't need to happen. Exactly. And, it, and it can't for us. I mean, even if, we, even if we wanted to make a $200 million Jack and the Beanstalk, we couldn't and we wouldn't. Right. Well, right now we're going to take a look at a clip, a national clip that's airing of the bet. When we return, we'll talk more with Jack. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? I was, uh, I was wondering if you ever like to go out. I am out. 
Yeah, um, I mean, like, on dates. Why? Oh, uh, I just wanted to see if maybe you'd like to catch a movie sometime or something. What is this, a dare? Because uh, I don't think you're ready for me. Uh, I'm ready. I don't do movies, but come to the waters at eight and we can discuss alternatives. Yeah, that, that'd that be great. That was just amazing. You know, one of my favorite parts is when the girl actually licks his face. You know, that's, that's great. That actor was always uh, feeling badly about that scene because he knew she was having to lick makeup every time she did a take on that scene, and he, he, still, he still wants to apologize to her. It's a labor of love. Labor of love, exactly. So, Jack, how does Community Film Studio Santa Barbara choose their projects? Well, uh, a good question. I have to say, you've asked it in a very optimistic way, which is how do we choose our projects? We've done one project, this is it so far. So maybe the better question is how did we pick this project? And, and, and I can also talk about what the next project will be. Okay. We uh, came together as an organization for, for incorporating purposes and had a board of directors, people that I'd asked to join me and help to, to craft this organization. Um, in the spring of 2011. And we spent about a year kind of figuring out what it was that we wanted to create. You know, we had to have bylaws and a lot of corporate paperwork, stuff like that, things that needed to be done. And part of that equation was, when do we want to make a movie? And there was a contingent on the board that says, well, we need to make a movie right away. Let's just, let's just do it, let's just dive in. I was more conservative, it's like, well, no, we need to raise the funds, we need to figure out who we are and do education for the new members and then we'll make a movie. And the voices that said, nope, we just gotta jump in and make a movie right away, uh, won. So as we moved closer to becoming a public organization where we announced to the public that we're open, come join us, come be a part of this, uh, we realized that what we wanted to open with was to say, and this is the first movie we're going to make. So in the winter of 2011, we put out a call for scripts. And the call went national. Uh, we you know, tried to put it in the hands of as many people as we thought had scripts that might be game for letting a bunch of crazy people in Santa Barbara making it. And we, we got a, a, a nice selection, a small selection, because nobody knew who we were or what the heck we were doing, and we weren't paying any money. Um, but we got, we got some nice scripts, and they came from all over the country, and I think we even got one from Canada. And we, we read those scripts, um, we evaluated them as a board, and in the end, we picked two that we thought were the kinds of stories that we wanted to tell. For a lot of independent filmmakers, there's a, 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 a kind of a mandate that says you have to make a, 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 a movie for a particular niche audience. So a lot of young independent filmmakers make horror movies because there's an audience for horror movies. If somebody's arm gets cut off or zombies eat your flesh, there's an audience for that. Um, we did not want to fall back onto that kind of lowest common denominator. We wanted to make what we, at least as a board, believed were quality motion pictures, intelligent motion pictures. Motion pictures that are hard to sell, frankly, because they don't have zombies and they don't have things that blow up and they don't have guns, uh, but movies that have stories, good stories, and good character development. So we picked the two scripts out of the bunch that we thought represented that. You know, our name is Community Film Studios Santa Barbara. We've got our city's name right, not, right in the name of the organization. We, we hold ourselves to a pretty high standard because we're, we do feel representative of our community. We want to deliver a I product. Know. TV Santa know Barbara, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, we, we feel a responsibility to make sure that we're putting out quality product. And we want it to be a product that everybody in Santa Barbara can see and enjoy and be proud of. So that does eliminate certain choices that we might make. Um, so these two scripts that we had, one was, was, was more ready to move into production than the other one was. So we selected The Bet 
to be the first movie that we made. And then the second one would be The Mentors. And that, that script has been in development as we have been producing The Bet. Okay. And we're still in development on that script. It's still got a little ways to go before we're quite ready to go with it. But it's going to be a compelling drama, uh, n not comedy the way The Bet is. Um, so we announced that we would be making The Bet as our first film. And so that decision was really made by the board of directors because that's all there was at the time when we made the decision. And the same with The Mentors because we selected and optioned both scripts at the same time. Moving forward, um, the process will be uh, probably a little more expansive for a couple of reasons. One would be, I suspect the next time we request scripts, we'll get a lot more scripts. Excellent. You know, now, we've, now we have a movie out in the marketplace, it's a good movie. I would hope that screenwriters could say, I, I want these people to make our movie because this is a, they know what they're doing and they're making good movies and I want my movie to be that good. And so I would hope that we would see many more scripts, which means we need our members now participating in the reading and the coverage of those scripts, reading them and, and then giving us notes on this is, these are the pluses and minuses of this script so that we don't have to read a hundred scripts to make a choice. We can read the coverage for a hundred scripts and then we'll read the select ten, you know. Uh, but the decision will still be ultimately made by the board, and that's really as it should be because as a board of directors, we have a financial responsibility. It's our legal obligation as, as an incorporation uh, to make sure that we're being careful with the money of the organization. Right. We're, we're shepherds of those funds. And so we have to make educated choices. We can't just say, this will be fun. I mean, that plays a role, but we also have to say, from a production perspective, can we make this movie? Can we affordably do this? Do we have the money that we'll need to do this? So we have to take a responsible view on it as well. And so that decision ultimately will, will always rest with the board. Uh, but it will be informed by those people who read the scripts in the first place. And if we get 100 scripts the next time we open up for scripts, the people who read them first and write the coverage will have a lot of influence on which ones kind of percolate to the top. Excellent. And that's just as it is in Hollywood. The development people, you know, uh, who read and cover scripts, um, they have a lot of influence on, on what scripts get attention further up the food chain. All right. Well, right now, we're going to take a look at an animation that briefly describes what community film studio Santa Barbara is about. We'll be right back. So, you know how you're watching a movie and go, I could do that, and then the credits roll, and it occurs to you that maybe you could be a critic, because putting all those skills together so that a story shows up in the dark for you like magic is something you really can't imagine doing, but you can do it. All you have to do, no matter what you do in real life, is join us. We are making films right here with not much money, but when pros and amateurs alike do it because it makes us giddy that we can create something together, well, it doesn't have to take much money because stories belong to all of us. All of us have something to contribute. So you know how you go, ooh, um, where do I fit in? Okay, so you know we're making films. On the way, we're also making our own studio. We're not talking about the buildings. We mean the way things operate, the way they'll work for our community. We're making this studio so the expertise, the experience, the knowledge flow and gets the stuff that needs doing done. So you're excited now and say, can I direct? I've never done it, but the way we'll build this studio together, you can learn. People in a community teach each other. A studio gives us a way, a plan for making that happen, a route to follow. So if you follow that route, you can learn. We're out to make films. Make friends, make that magic. We're making the community film studio Santa Barbara. All right, Jack, so let's talk about the bet. How uh, was it financed? Uh, was it digital? Was it film? Is the, are the proceeds going to go back to the community film studio, Santa Barbara? Well, um, as, a, as a nonprofit charitable organization, our primary source of funds is philanthropic, people donating money to us. And that it's everything from the people who join as members of the organization and they, the, the little $25 a year annual dues that they pay, uh, up to uh, very generous companies that want to 
not just support their community, but also take advantage of what we believe is, is a truly unique kind of sponsorship opportunity. Um, and that is the opportunity to have your name, your company's name, uh, permanently a part of a feature motion picture that will play around the world and live forever. I mean, movies never go away. And so we're able to offer to a company a sponsorship opportunity that's, that's pretty unique. You know, a lot of companies sponsor a lot of events. Maybe it's a walkathon, and there's a nice banner, you know, that's got all the corporate logos of all the sponsors. And for that day, the people walking in that walkathon know that the ABC Corporation was a sponsor. Uh, but after the event, Nobody remembers the ABC Corporation was a sponsor. The banner's gone. It's history. It's gone with the wind. Motion picture lives forever. Uh, and so we're able to you know, provide a, a kind of brand extension that's pretty unique. So that's, a, that's a, an approach that we hope becomes more widely embraced as we move into our next motion picture. Um, but we did have a, a corporate sponsor for the bet, lunamadre.com. It's a new company and saw for themselves the opportunity to use the film as part of their launch pad for their company. You know, it was an, it was an affordable uh, and yet pretty provocative way to get their company name out there quickly. Excellent. And I, I hope it's working out. I think it is. We've worked really closely with them to, to, to give them as much as we can uh, because we, we love them for their, their support and, and we want to give that back to them. Um, yes. And then we've had individual donors, people who've you know, just really loved what we're doing and who've you know, given, us, given us some financial support. So it, that's the way that we put the money together to make the bet. Um, we also had a lot of help from companies that wanted to loan us equipment. Uh, Sony, for example, loaned us the Sony F3 camera, which is a dynamite camera. Uh, that we shot the bet with. It's a digital camera. Uh, we recorded onto a device from a company called AJA. Uh, it's called the Key Pro Mini. We have those in the studio uh, right now. We're using them. And so we recorded onto the Key Pro Mini and it made gorgeous pictures for us. Uh, another company donated uh, a lot of Macintoshes that they were retiring from their edit fleet and they said, here, you can have them. And so those got repurposed and became our edit systems. And so we've had a lot of support from, from other kinds of companies as well as just the community at large. When we made the movie, we had restaurants that donated food, uh, locations that let us shoot in their facilities for free without charging us. Um, we, we, we really received the generosity of the community. And we didn't take advantage of that, at least I hope we didn't, in that we were very cognizant, you know, I talked about community earlier in Santa Barbara and how responsible we feel about that. Well, it was also important that we embraced the, the production guidelines that the state of California recommends, and we also adopted the, the Los Angeles production guidelines, which are really a series of rules of conduct that you impose upon your crew and the say, union look, or non -union. it doesn't matter who you are. When you're in somebody's neighborhood, you don't go stand in somebody else's yard. You stay in the yard you're shooting at. You don't go park and block driveways. You don't uh, use profanity. You, there's, there's just a whole list of ways to, to conduct yourself in a professional manner, in a courteous manner, that makes people enjoy having film production in their neighborhood as opposed to going, I can't wait till they're gone. And so we tried really hard to make sure that, that our volunteer crew uh, embraced those ideas as well. So it, we want to be here for a long time. We want to make movies in Santa Barbara for a long time. So we, we can't afford to make anybody unhappy. Right. And how was the city involved with uh, permits for locations and casting? Uh, what kind of ordeal was it in that regard? I, I wouldn't call it an ordeal at all. You know, we had to, we're doing some things that have not been done before. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we asked the city to consider uh, waiving permit fees for us because we are an educational organization. You know, a lot of what we do is about educating members in the craft of filmmaking. Um, and they recognized that and wanted to support us. And so, for the most part, they did waive fees. Uh, 
Uh, they were very helpful with us, and, and we tried to work within the framework they wanted as opposed to the way a lot of productions might come into town the day before and say, i got to have a permit right now. You know, we, we played by their timelines, and, and so we tried to, you know, it was a good give and take, and I think we had a great relationship with the city, and, and, and we thanked them in the movie. It's, uh, it was, they, they were wonderful. Casting, very similar. You know, we, we got the word out to the campuses because we have young people in the film. We got the, the word out to SBCC and UCSB, and I think it went to some of the other campuses as well in, in town. Um, we put notices in Craigslist, flyers everywhere. That's awesome. Um, and, and we had an incredible group of people turn out to, to, to audition for the film. Most of our actors, not all of them, but most of our actors had virtually no acting experience prior to coming into this movie. And we had a director who's got decades of acting experience, and so she was able to help them find a voice and a performance that felt authentic and true. And, and I think it I think it shows completely in the film. The film's marvelous, and the performances are marvelous. I, I love all of our actors. Excellent, Jack. I'd like to thank you for being on the show. There is a film studio in town, and it is not Flying A, which was here a hundred years ago. It's back, and it is called Community Film Studio Santa Barbara. We encourage the public to go and check out their first world premiere of their first motion picture, The Bet, at the Arlington Theater, April 19th and 20th. Thank you for watching.